Well, welcome to Calvary Assembly Online. I'm so glad that you are joining with us this morning. And while gathering online, I just want you to be aware you actually have options to interact. You can drop comments or respond to some of the content that you're experiencing. And you may have a question to ask. Actually, Pastor Jonathan is available and on right now, and he would love to be able to respond. Uh, someone asked me if it was going to feel weird talking to an empty auditorium, and I told them I've done this before. It's like a flashback to 22 years ago when our church family was actually quite small. What I can tell you is God has been faithful in every single one of those years, and 2020 will not be the year that God stops being faithful. I do want to acknowledge that uh, the decision to move from a physical service to an online service was not an easy one for us to make. And I'm aware that there are some people who could interpret that option as maybe surrendering to fear. Uh, what I want you to know is that there's lots of fears. Uh, you know, we could have been afraid that we would lose too much if we didn't meet physically. So our decision wasn't decided or determined by fear. Fear paralyzes. Faith activates. And we're not stuck. We're not paralyzed. We're actually moving forward with options that help us stay connected. Um, I believe that God has called us to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves and as much as we love our own families. And in this situation, love actually calls on us to help protect our neighbors. I'm sure at some point in your life, someone challenged you to do an unwise thing, and then they said if you didn't do it, it showed that you were afraid. And we've all had moments when our fear of what someone's opinion of us was actually outweighed our fear of an outcome. And so uh, we stepped into some things maybe we shouldn't have. And we could probably all take time to, to tell some stories or maybe share some scars from those decisions. I want you to know that our leadership is making every effort we can to be responsible and to exercise wise options for our church family. Of course, we want to see our church family protected, but we also want to protect our friends, our family, our neighbors, our community. Gathering online is, is something we can do to help protect others. And just so you know, we're gonna continually assess our options, and if we adjust our decisions, uh, we'll keep you fully informed about that. When we finally physically gather again, you can trust that we've thought it through carefully and prayed it through diligently. I do think that in our time together today, it would be really helpful for us to go to a resource of strength and encouragement that generations of people have used, and that's God's Word. And so we are going to be in Acts the 11th chapter, and we're beginning in verse 19, and it said, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Stephen was a, a young follower of Jesus, full of faith, and he was a follower of Jesus at a time when hostility towards those followers was growing daily to the point that it actually led to murder. Stephen was the very first martyr of the Christian faith. And when he was killed, it did two things. It actually emboldened those who were persecuting the church. But it also caused the church to rethink its strategy for meeting and for reaching a lost world. Gospel means good news. That's right. Those who were being persecuted actually talked about good news, not just the latest news. Their faith was overriding their fear. It didn't make them stubborn. Rather, it made them bold and creative. It's important to mention that they didn't allow their fear to morph into anger. What we know is that fear cannot be defeated by our anger. Now, these believers, they didn't have an option any longer of meeting in large numbers. 
uh, as they once had done. So they began to move to other cities, places where they could raise their families. And some may have considered that as an option of fear. But these believers weren't running, they were going. They weren't running away, they were going into all the world. At the very time it looked like the message of Jesus was going to be limited, it actually was spreading. At the very time it looked as though the followers of Jesus were being intimidated, they were actually exercising even more influence. There was an individual, he was kind of a, a key player in the death of Stephen. His name was Saul, and he was from a city called Tarsus. And, and he was responsible, or at least partially responsible, for Stephen's death. When he saw the faith of Stephen, it started him on a spiritual journey that would completely transform his life. So much so that he even changed his name to Paul. There would come a moment when he was actually writing to another young follower who was struggling with his own anxiety. And this is what he wrote to a young man named Timothy. The spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. Those followers of Jesus were not driven by fear. So how can we tell that? Well, first of all, they told their own story wherever they went. When you're afraid, you don't tell things about yourself. And they were actually aware of other people's suffering. When you're afraid, you tend to only focus on self. And they were sensitive to God's direction. They could still hear his promptings and see the doors he was opening for them. And they were willing to serve the needs of others. And I think we all desire to be people like this. Fear paralyzes, but faith activates us. Now, we could rehearse our fears. And we could magnify our doubts. We could take a break, not just from meeting physically for worship, but actually check out spiritually altogether. Or we could engage in worship in the option that's provided and look for ways for God to use it. We could decide that uh, we're no longer available to serve simply because we don't have a campus to go to and we don't have an assignment that's been given to us. Or... Maybe God has something for us to do every single place we go. We could hold on to our resources for fear we will not have enough. Or we could continue to practice generosity. Fear paralyzes. Faith activates. Even now, there's communities of people who are very vulnerable due to living conditions and limited access to health care. And they live in places that we would prefer not to go. But someone is there, and they're sharing the gospel, the good news with them. And they still need our support, both in prayer and in finances. It's one of the reasons we have online options available, so we can continue to practice our generosity. Fear paralyzes, but faith activates us. We're actually continuing to build our expanded space because we will not be paralyzed by fear. The day will come when we will gather again in a space that allows even more people to experience the grace of God for themselves. Right now, you can share our online worship options with people you know and maybe you're con who are concerned and, and are afraid. The day may come when they don't just log into the same web address but they actually walk into the church with you. The verse says, the Lord's hand was on them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Fear paralyzes. You can get trapped. You can be unable to think any different thoughts or exercise any different options, but faith can activate you. How? Well, you can convert your worries into prayer. You can actually start a conversation with God about what is keeping you awake at night. You would be surprised what happens when you honestly acknowledge your fears to God. You discover that God is activated too. You won't misplace your worry, but you can replace it simply by turning your worries into prayers. This is what it tells us in Philippians, the fourth chapter. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for what he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts 
and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Jesus was one of those people who could walk into a crisis and he didn't panic. Others could be overwhelmed by their fears and unable to discern any other options. Jesus could be in a room like that and unaffected by the terror. In fact, his calm would help to calm others. His confidence would begin to seep into the hearts and the minds of those who were with him. It's still true of him. When Jesus is present, worry fades. When Jesus is in control, fear abates. This decision to invite Jesus in and give him control is something we can make every single day. I'd like us to do that now. I'm going to give some prayer focus points. And I'd like you to think about this and, and take some time praying about this. I'm, I'm putting them on the screen for you. And after I identify them, I'm actually going to step away, allow you to have a conversation with God. Maybe it'll be private or with your family, with your friends. Uh, when I step away, we'll leave some soft music playing for a few minutes if you want to continue that conversation. But invite Jesus to lead you, to lead your family in a season like this, to help lead your actions and your responses. Invite Jesus to help us experience generosity right in the midst of a time when people are hoarding much-needed resources. Maybe we can actually be, become the kind of people who share them. And pray for opportunities to share good news, to pray with people, not just for them. And pray for your family to be healthy, physically and spiritually. Right now, a hand on a shoulder, a bowed head, and a whispered prayer to Jesus could be exactly what brings the presence of Jesus into your home and worries and fears begin to fade. Pray that the Lord's hand will be with us and that a great number of people will believe and turn to the Lord.